So now, after going over exponential functions in general and then exponential functions to the base e, now it's time to go over log functions. Section 4.3, logarithmic functions. So if you recall exponential functions, f of x equals e to the x, there's two, two forms of exponential graphs. The exponential growth one, if b is greater than 1, and then the exponential decay, which is if b is between 0 and 1. They both have a y-intercept at 1, no x-intercepts. One goes along the positive x-axis, uh, negative x-axis, the other goes along the positive x-axis. In either case, the, the, the functions are one-to-one. -one. And every one-to-one -one function has an inverse function, okay? So we're going to discuss the inverse of exponential functions. Again, because they are one-to-one -one functions, meaning they pass the horizontal line test. So they have what we call inverse functions. To find so then that basic graph, f of x, equals b to the x, where b is greater than 0 and not 1, to find the equation of its inverse. So the steps that we use are the first step, if you remember, replace f of x with y. So it's y equals b to the x. Switch x and y, so x equals b to the y. And now, <coughs> excuse me, now we want to isolate y or solve for y. And that's where uh, conventional methods are not going to work because y is an exponent. We don't know what to do with an exponent, how to isolate it. So we have to come up with a new solution because it's not a conventional problem we can solve using a conventional method. So what we're going to say, we're y, which is an exponent, remember y is an exponent. So we're going to say y is an exponent equals the logarithm of x to the base b. And that's how we're going to isolate y. So y equals, we know what equals is. There, instead of writing all this, we're just going to take the first three letters of the word logarithm and just write log of x. Remember f of x, g of x. So of x, that means that's the input. And then what's new here that we didn't see in all other functions is there's a base, just like a serial number. Every machine you buy has a serial number, so a log always has a base to the base B. And we put the base at the bottom of the letter G, okay? So we either say log base B of X or log of X to the base B. It's like F of X, G of X, H of X. The only thing is this new function has a base, has a serial number. So it's like having log base B, that's your function. Your input is x, and your output is log base b of x, okay? That's what this is about. So once we have isolated y, remember, y is an exponent, and y equals log. So we got to keep that in mind. So now we can say the last is f inverse of x is log base b of x. So what do we take, what do we take from all this? We're going to talk here about two facts. The first fact is y equals log base b of x, which is called log form, is equivalent to x equals b to the y, which is exponential form. So we're going to learn how to switch back and forth from log to exponential, usually because we're log is a new concept to us. It's not really new because we did that in 1150. Uh, so if we're stuck with log form, we're going to switch it to exponential form, the equivalent exponential form. Okay, where did this come from? Right here. We started with y equals log base b of x. We ended up 
with x equals b to the y, okay? Log form, exponential form. Log form, exponential form. So how do we switch back and forth? It's not hard, so hard. So if we have if we have log base b of x equal y, which is the log form, how do we switch it to exponential? We always start at the bottom of the letter g, which is at the base, and we go across the equal sign. y, remember y is log, so y is an exponent, so it's b to the exponent, b to the exponent y equal x. Now we're in exponential form, so we drop the log, and that's it. Okay, so we start at the bottom of the letter G, we go across the equal sign, remember Y is a log, it's an exponent, that's how we got to be log, so Y to the exponent Y equal X, drop the log because now we're in exponential form. Now if we have the exponential form, how do we go to log? Well, since we're going to log, we write log, B is the base, so we put it here, and then again, same thing, B to the exponent Y equal X, and then we put the parentheses. So let's practice. So this is the first fact, and then there's the second fact that we're going to talk about later, but let's practice some examples about that. So number 12, page 351, how do we switch between log and exponential forms? Part A, log base 5 of 1 over 125 equal negative 3. So this is a log form. We want to write it in exponential form, so we start at the 5 across the equal sign. So 5 to the exponent negative 3 equals 1 over 125. And we drop the log because now we are in exponential form. It's true that 5 to the negative 3 is 1 over 125. It's also true that log base 5 of 1 over 125 is negative 3. Part B, log base 8 of 4 equals 2 thirds. Again, we have the log form. We want to switch it into exponential. We start at the base. 8 to the exponent 2 thirds equal 4. And that's the exponential form. All right, let's look at number 20, page 352. In number 20, we have the opposite. We have the exponential form. We want to switch it to log. 4 to the negative 3 halves equals 0.125. Since we want to switch it to log, so we write log, we start at the base, the base is 4, that goes at the bottom of the letter G, across the equal sign is the exponent, which is negative 3 halves, and there's only one spot left for 0.125. So log base 4 of 1.125 equals negative 3 halves. Part B, another exponential form, 7 cubed equals 343, how do we write it in log form? So since we want log, we put log, the base is 7, to the exponent, is the exponent 3 or 343? Of course it's 3, and then the input is 343. So log base 7 of 343 equals 3. Okay. So before we go to fact 2, let me introduce to you two special logs, logs with specific bases that are most commonly used to special logs. The first one is what we call common log. In common logs, the base is always 10. And instead of writing log base 10 of x, we just write log of x. So it's common knowledge that if the log doesn't have a base, then it's automatically assumed to be log base 10. And the calculator has that log to the base 10. It's right there. So you press that, it comes out as log, and then parentheses right there, next, next to the number 7, okay? And the second log is what we call natural or Napierian log. In this log, the base is always e, the, the irrational number e. So instead of writing log base e of x, we write ln of x. ln is for natural, n for natural or Napierian, and l for log, okay? And when you see ln, that's automatically base e. No one is going to tell you that. You have to know that. And right there, you can see ln, and in the background, you see e. Just like log in the background, you see 10. That reminds you what the bases are, okay? 
All right, let's talk about some properties of logs. It's just a review from immediate algebra. So log base B of B is one. So if the input and the base are the same, the answer to the log is one. Why is that? Let's switch it to exponential. B to the first power equals B. If B to the first power equals B, then log base B of B is one. So for example, just before we go to two, if I have log base three of three, that's one. If I have log of 10, that's one. Why is that? Because remember, if there is no base, that's a 10. And your calculator can confirm that log of 10 is one. Okay, log of 10 is one. ln of e is also 1. Why? Because remember, ln of e is log base e of e. Okay, again, ln, if you second division to e without the power, it's a 1. ln of e is 1. Okay, rule number 2, log base, remember the base always has to be greater than 0 and different from 1. Log base b of 1 is 0. Why is that? Because if you do exponential b to the 0 equals 1. We know that any base to a 0 power is 1. So log to any base of 1 is 0. So if you do log of 1, whether it's log base 10 or ln of 1 or log to any base, you're getting 0. Okay. And... log base b of b to the x if the bases are equal you can cancel base b and log base b and you just get x again why is that because b to the x equals b to the x so for example if you have ln of e cube is 3 if you have log of 10 to the negative 2 is negative 2 because the bases are the same the bases are the same so you kind of like cancel them out okay also, if you reverse that, b log base b of x is x, as long as x positive, okay? Why? Because remember, domain of log is only positive real numbers, okay? So if you do e to the ln of x, that's x. And if you do 10 log of x, that's also x. So for example, if I have e to the ln of 3, that's 3. If I have 10, log of 2, that's 2. Okay. So a few more examples. How do we evaluate log base 5 of 5 to the 4th power? Again, these cancel out and you get 4 log base 4 of 64 what does that equal to so you're going to ask 4 to what power is going to equal 64 obviously it's a 3 right 4 times 4 times 4 uh part number 3 log base 3 of 9 that equals 3 to what power 3 to the second power is 9 so that equals 2 number 30 page 352 Okay, I'm going to do part B. Log base 49 of 7. What does that equal to? Well, you're going to say 49 to what power is 7? It's not going to be a whole number. It's going to be a fraction, right? We know that square root of 49 is 7, which is actually 49 to the 1 half. So that should be 1 half. Right? Because 49 to the 1 half is 7. Part C. From number 30, page 352, log base 9 of square root of 3. Again, what is that equal to? So basically we're saying, if this is x, basically we're saying 9 to the x equals square root of 3, which is 3 to the 1 half. So we can write this as 3 squared 
to the x, which is 3 to the 2x, power to power root, 2 times x is 2x. 3 to the 2x is 3 to the 1 half, so we can make these equal, because the bases are equal. 2x is 1 half, so x is 1 quarter. So sometimes it's tricky, but it's doable. So we did 9 to what power is 3 to the 1 half. We realized that's not something we could guess, but the base here is 3, so we wrote 3 as 3 squared. And then to the x, 2 times x is 2x. The bases are equal, so will the exponents, and that's how we came up with our answer. So another thing, how do we evaluate e to the ln of pi? e and ln have the same base, so they cancel out. Part b, 10 to the log of 5. Again, 10 and log base 10 cancel each other out. And number 40, page 352. How do we evaluate? log base 4 of 2. Uh, this is page, let me see, 352, number 40. Let me see what it says. Alright, it says use the definition of log to find x so find x okay log base 4 of 2 is x so in order to find x we can change it into exponential 4 to the x equals 2 so we know square root of 4 is 2 so x is 1 half okay because square root is a power of 1 half and part B, we're still on number 40, part B, log base 4 of x equal 2, if we change it into exponential 4, 4 squared equal x, so x is 16. Alright, number 44, a lot of examples for you, okay, page 352, again find x, where x now is the base, so x to the one half is six. Remember, x to the one half is nothing but square root of x. So if you square both sides, x is thirty-six. Okay. Part B. Can we find x if log base x of three is one third? Again, if we go to exponential, x to the one third is three. That's cube root of x. So if you cut, we get x equal 3 cubed is 27. Okay, so that's the first fact from, from the beginning of the class, right? The x equal b to the y is equivalent to y equals log base b of x. The second factor is the inverse. Remember, we're trying to find the inverse of f of x equal b to the x. Its inverse is log base b of x, okay? So let me write this down. So fact two. exponential function f of x equals b to the x is log base b of x. And remember what inverse means. They swap x and y. Domain here is negative infinity to infinity and range is 0 to infinity. So now this is domain is going to be 0 to infinity and range is negative infinity. So now we cannot, so we know we cannot do log of zero or log negative. Okay, if we do it on the calculator, let's do log base 10. So we have that. So log of negative two, it's telling me, it's giving me imaginary. Okay, well, it if we, uh, 
if we do log of zero, same thing. Okay, it's error. It's not in the domain. So we can do log of say one half as long as that number is positive and you can see the y value the range can be negative okay the range can be negative so but the domain whatever you put into log has to be greater than zero not zero not negative keep that in mind okay so to graph logs by the way i i, I have a handout that's in, in the in the notes it's right here you should find it in your notes graph of log base b of x if the base is greater than one if the base is greater than one and on the second page graph the base is between zero and one here i used a there i used b it doesn't matter okay and it gives you all the properties of logs so make sure you go over that and then there's a handout about exponential and log i'm going to go over that in class but this should shows you the inverse okay i i drew i drew the exponential i would want you to do the inverse here but i'm going to do it in class and then this has some graphs to do okay for you so to graph logs to graph log functions let's go over two examples The first one, if the base B is greater than one, I'll just use two, okay, for simplicity. So remember, exponential, and then we're gonna do log exponential functions, which we did in four one and four two, and then log functions, which we're doing right now. But they're inverses of each other, so it's good to see the connection. So if I'm doing f of x equals 2 to the x or y equals 2 to the x, which, which I did, but I'm going to redo now, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if you do that, that's a quarter, 1 half, 2 to the negative 1, 1, 2 to the 1, and then 2 squared. And graphing it on the rectangular system of coordinates we know it's exponential growth because the base is greater than one negative two a quarter negative one one half zero one one two and then two four so it gives us the exponential growth graph that we have a handout of and then we did in 4, 1, and 4, 2. y equals 2 to the x, f of x, 0, 1. Now, if you go to f inverse of x, which is log base 2 of x, so you see the same base, they're inverses of each other. Since they're inverses of each other, what do we expect? We expect that these two are swapped, so we expect 1 quarter negative 2, but let's say we had no clue. So look what you can do to graph it you're doing log base 2 of x equal y so we switch it into exponential so 2 to the y equal x and then we plug in the y values to get the x values x equals 2 to the negative 2 2 to the negative 2 a quarter 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half 2 to the 0 2 to the 1 and then 2 squared and if you see, if you look, exactly what inverse should be about. Negative 2, a quarter, quarter, negative 2. Negative 1, 1 half, 1 half, negative 1. Okay? So if we graph the inverse on the same system of the nets, let's see what happens. So 0, 1 is going to be 1, 0. Uh, 1, 2, it's going to be 2, 1. And then 2, 4 is going to be 4, 2. and negative two a quarter is going to be a quarter negative two and then we have negative one and you draw the graph of the log oops sorry i missed a little bit it's okay this is the inverse f inverse of x is log base two of x and if you draw the line of symmetry better images of each other okay 
So this is the graph of log if the base is greater than 1. Whether you use 2x or 3 to the x or 4 to the x or 1.5 to the x, as long as the base is greater than 1. And now I want to show you graphs when the base is between 0 and 1. And you can see they're mirror images of each other. So, example 2, if the base B is between 0 and 1, say B is 1 half. We already did the exponential, let's redo it. It's a good review. Exponential function, f of x plus y equals 1 half to the x. And remember, this is, this is the same thing as 2 to the negative x. A t-chart, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So it's the 4, 2 to the 1 is 2, 1, and then 1 half, and then a quarter. And if you graph it, If you graph it, so negative two, four, negative one, two, zero, one, one, one half, two, a quarter. It's the exponential decay case as we know y equals one half to the x <clears throat> and if we want to do inverse which is a log function let me use a different pen uh, so f inverse of x which is y, which is log base half of x. If we make a t chart, again, these are going to be swapped. You can do the same thing that I did 2, negative 1, 1 half 1, uh, 1, 0, 1 half 1, and then uh, a quarter 2. Okay, so if you graph it, 4, negative 2, 3, 4. 4, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, and then 1 half 1, a quarter 2. So you can see how the graph is going down, it's decreasing. And this is the graph of y equals log base 1 half x, and their mirror images along the line y equals x as you can see okay so if you look at the two log graphs let me just write them down so you know what i'm talking about so there are two uh basic log graphs just like exponential log graphs there's the increasing one and the decreasing one the increasing one that's if the base is y equals log base b of x, base is greater than 1. And there's the decreasing one, which we saw next. One zero is the x-intercept, y equals log base b of x, as long as the base is between 0 and 1. So, the, so you're going to get either this shape or that shape depending on the base. They both have the same x-intercept. Domain is 0 to infinity. Range is negative infinity to infinity. They go along the vertical asymptote at the negative y-axis or the positive y-axis. Okay, so let me write all these down. Properties of log functions. They both have domain zero to infinity, range 
negative infinity to infinity and then x intercept as we see it's at one zero and no y intercept these are all written in your notes so that's why i'm writing them a little fast and then number five you can see the y-axis is a vertical asymptote so it's x equals zero is a vertical asymptote and we have no horizontal asymptotes and if the base is greater than one f is increasing right like that and if the base is between zero and one it's decreasing okay so no knowing this and knowing shifting and translation we're gonna do some more complex log graphing so here graph the following functions without using a t table so the first one y equals log base 2 of x minus 2 so the first thing we have to recognize the base is 2 so it's increasing function but it's shifted right to so if you look at the basic graph and you want to shift it right to this is the basic graph so you're going to shift two things the whole thing has to be shifted but as a, as a, as, a, as an assistant you're going to shift the y-axis two units to the right and you're going to shift one zero to the units to the right and then copy paste so this is the y-axis which is the asymptote and this is the intercept one zero these are the ones that are going to be shifted so x equals zero is going to go to x equal 2 we always make the asymptotes dotted lines and 1 0 is going to go to 3 0 if we shift it to units to the right and then copy and paste and this would be the graph of log base 2 of x minus 2 all right let's look at number 2 or 2 star you can do to yourself y equals negative log base one half of x so you can see the base is one half so it's this graph but it's 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 flipped along the x-axis so we have a reflection in the x-axis that's all what's in there so basically we start here this piece it's going to be that and this piece it's going to be that so so we have something like this okay it looks it looks this is what we got okay oh wait wait i'll take that back cross this out let me just redo this i made a mistake okay so this is the original one This is y equals log base one half of x. So we want to shift, you know, this is this is what we're shifting. This is what we're flipping along. So if we take this and, and flip it along, it'll just be that. Yeah, that's what I made a mistake. And this one, just going to be that. So this looks like the increasing one. When you flip log, you know, the decreasing one, it looks like the increasing one. That's what it is. Yeah, so the first one was wrong, okay? And then if you look at example three in your notes, log equals log b2 of x plus two. So it's the increasing case, but it's shifted up to. So if you look at the increasing case, shifted up to one zero, it's gonna go up to one two. And then if you shift the y-axis up two or up one million, it's still to be the y-axis, but the whole graph will be shifted up two. So it's going to be the same shape, but shifted up two. That's all. Okay. And then finally, number four, y equals log base two of negative x. So it's the increasing graph because the base is greater than one, but it has a reflection in the y-axis because f of negative x in the y-axis so 
let me just do the basic graph dotted this would be y equals log base 2 of x flip it along the y-axis so 1 0 is negative 1 0 and then this piece be that and then you just go you have the y-axis as the mirror image the mirror so this is y equal log base 2 of negative x all right 74 page 352 it says find the domain of f of x equals log base 5 of 8 minus 2x remember domain of log whatever you throw into log in this case this is what you're throwing into log in this case 8 minus 2x has to be what greater than 0 okay I, d I don't care what x is as long as you times it by 2 and subtract from 8 has to be greater than 0 so what should x be that's what we're going to do subtract the 8 negative 2x is greater than negative 8 divide by negative 2 divide by negative we flip the sign so x is less than 4 so the domain is negative infinity to 4 now you're going to see we can plug in a negative value like you can plug in negative 2 for x what's negative 2 times negative 2 4, 4 plus 8 is 12 that's why it's okay because the final m is positive okay so negative 8 to 4 is the domain of this law again another one about domain is uh, 74 page 352 h of x equals square root of x minus 2 minus log base 5 of 10 minus x so there's two issues here there's square root and there's log so under the square root everything has to be greater or equal to zero and inside the log everything has to be strictly greater than zero okay like you can do zero under the square root but not under not into the log so this tells me that x has to be greater or equal to 2 and this tells me that negative x is greater than negative 10 divide by negative 1 x is less than 10 so x has to be greater or equal to 2 and less than 10 which means greater or equal to 2 less than 10 so any number that's 2 or higher but less than 10 will be okay in both domains and that's it for section 4.3 that was a little bit long but we're good so until 4.4 have a four have, have a good